What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we will solve a problem involving magnetostatics. The problem reads, Find and sketch the trajectory of the particle in example 5.2 if it starts at the origin with the velocity, letter A, E over B, Y hat. Okay? So, as you recall, when we did our exp uh, example 5.2, the resulting motion is of the form of a cycloid. And this is derived when we set the following initial conditions. That the particle started at the origin. Of course, here, we because of the configuration of the magnetic field and electric field, the particle is constrained to move along the y z plane so when the particle started at the origin and it started from rest due to the Lorentz force uh, due to the magnetic and electric field the particle moved in a cycloid motion okay in this problem we introduce an initial velocity that is directed along y so this is actually uh, this is actually y dot at time equal to 0 equals E over B Y hat. Okay? As you will notice that, this is a constant. So initially, the particle moves at a constant velocity at time equal to 0. Now, going back to the general solution, which we discussed earlier that along the y this is equal to c1 cosine omega t plus c2 sine omega t plus e over b t plus c3 on the other hand, along the z-direction, the particle moves with this expression. C2 cosine omega t minus C, ah, so C1. This is C1. Sine omega t plus C4. So as you will notice that C1, C2, C3, and C4 are all constants and they are determined by our initial conditions. Okay? So based from our problem, the initial conditions would be this for Y dot and it started from the origin. So Y and Z at time equal to 0 is 0 y dot is e over b while z dot at time equal to zero is zero okay, so from here we can see that when we when we plug in these values here Okay, this will yield to the following. So when Z and Y at the origin is where the particle start at time equal to 0. So this is 0. Uh, this is 1. Cosine 0 is 1. Sine 0 is 0. E over BT is 0. Plus C3. So Y at time equal to 0 will become C1 plus C3 and this is equal to 0 on the other hand if we plug in the, this here the result would be Z at time equal to 0 equals C2 this term vanishes then plus C4 and this is equal to 0 good now what happens now if we 
uh, plug in this one but first we have to take the velocity functions so let's do this y dot at time t is now equal to negative omega c1 sine omega t plus omega c2 cosine omega t plus e over b so as you will notice that this is equal to c3 so the derivative of c3 is a constant and that's equal to zero now z dot is now equal to negative omega c2 sine omega t minus omega c1 cosine omega t so what does it mean it means that if we're going to substitute this here this will yield the following y dot at time equal to 0 will be equal to omega c2 because time is equal to 0 so this and this will cancel so this is omega c2 plus e over b and this is equal to e over b so this cancels so the result is c2 equals zero and that means this is zero from this fact this can give you c4 which is also equal to zero for z, z dot at time equal to 0 is negative what? Okay, good. Negative omega c1 and this is equal to 0. So this means that c1 is equal to 0. So this is 0. So this tells us that c3 is also equal to 0 so your result here and your result here we place it back here the general solution so therefore y at time equal to t is now equal to e over b t and z at time equal to t is equal to zero so what does it mean means that at any given point in time the particle stays at the y-axis so if we're going to sketch the graph here the particle will just move along the z uh, along the y-axis so this is the motion of the particle or trajectory of motion of the particle okay so you will notice that the particle moves in a straight line so if you're going to take the time derivative of this the time derivative is equal to e over b which is what we got earlier because the particle moves at a constant uh, linear with the uh, moves uh, the position of the particle in the long y varies linearly with time therefore the particle's velocity along that direction is a constant in time so if any at any given point in time the particle's velocity along y is e over b so therefore initially it should also be e over b so you have a consistent solution also 
if you're going to go back to your Lorentz force, so the Lorentz force, okay, is given by F equals Q times E plus V cross B. Now, taking note that the following. We note that the electric field is E along Z hat. V is E over B along Y. So this is E over B Y hat. And then B is along Z. So B ah, along X, sorry. X hat. So if you're going to take the cross product of this and then you add it to the electric field and then you multiply it with Q you get your Lorentz force. But taking note that remember that this can cancel. So the result here in this term is what? The result here is E y hat cross x hat y hat cross x hat is negative z hat. So that means this is equal to what? This is equal to Q times E Z hat minus E Z hat. And this yields a net force equal to zero. So we all know that if the net force acting on a particle is zero, it moves with a constant velocity, which is what we got earlier. Okay? So amazing, right? Now, your task is to answer the rest of the problem and that will be included into your problem set okay so i hope you learned something today and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching bye bye